Today, we dive into the world of gangsters, organizations, cartels. We talk today with a rapper named Young Blue, who's a local representative of the organization Gangster Disciples. We dive into history, politics, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, Young Blue. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are in Kansas City, Missouri, and you're in for a special treat. We're sitting here with the artist, man, and much more than that, Young Blue. How you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm excited because I'm here for a big old barbecue. Can you tell me why I'm here in Kansas City? Man, you're here to meet the guys, man. You're down here to fellowship with the guys, man, and get a little insight on what we got going on down here. So I've met with people all around the country. I think this might be my first official kind of gains your disciple interaction. I'm always curious about squads, teams, gains, however you want to put it, because I think everyone has one in one way or another. For me growing up, it was the wrestling team. It was trying to chase after being <laughs> national champions and grinding and you know putting that extra workout in the room. And I think brotherhood is really important. And I think, especially as I've, I've gotten older, I've realized like it is sometimes really lonely to be a man in this world. It's tough. Thanks. So tell me a little bit about brotherhood and what being part of your organization means to you. Man, being a part of the organization, man, it's like a, it's a side of a brotherhood, friendship you will never see nowhere outside of this because we all have the same beliefs and we all follow the same teachings. You dig what I'm saying? So it's easier to build camaraderie like that because it's we all on the same accord from the rip. You dig what I'm saying? So that's just a special thing itself, bringing together the guys collectively because we have the same beliefs. So have you noticed this at all that it is – really lonely being a man like when you go to high school you got people all around you when you're when you're involved in stuff like that but once you get out into the world it's kind of like damn like i don't i don't have a lot of people to call or you know the people i love have moved away like have you ever experienced loneliness as a grown man oh yeah when i first came down here you know what i'm saying like i said when i was telling you earlier off camera like when i came down here we wasn't how we is right now you know what i'm saying so when i came down here i was looking for this Already, so that's when my my brain was where the guys at. You know what I'm saying? Because of that loneliness, you know what I'm saying? And me being from Memphis and already experiencing the cam the camaraderie between the guys, I wanted to find it again. Okay, know? Memphis, M E M P H I S. I've heard about that place yeah. too. We'll have to explore that one day yeah. as well. Um, okay, so I guess tell me like what is unique? Tell me the <clears throat> history of the Gangster Disciples. How do they come to be? And because they've survived many decades of of thriving and, and being around. Tell me about the history, the origins, and how they've grown. Well, the history, man, like, it's it's so controversial, just like how you got you got BDs and GDs, man. We used to be one. It used to be BGD, you know what I'm saying? And before that, you had devil disciples, you know what I'm saying? And, devil uh, disciples? Yeah, devil disciples. So that was the that's where we came from. But throughout time and throughout history, we've made, like, positive changes towards the organization. So, like, from this era, we'll make a few changes. But then, like, in it, like 720, where we are, you know what I'm saying? We gangster disciples, but we we growth and development. You dig what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. We're going to always be that. You dig what I'm saying? But uh, with growth and development, it's a concept that uh, that the guys expose to the guys by trying to uh, create more unity than what it is already. You know what I'm saying? Growth and development opened up the doors for other races to become GD. You know what I'm saying? Is it possible for a white boy to become a, G a GD? Man, hell yeah. We got a couple of them. All right. I'm going to have to start the application process <laughs> off camera. <laughs> but, um, okay. So, like, what are the themes, the beliefs to the, the GD? Because I noticed a lot of uh, these groups have, like, their own little, like, mini religion, mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. Or tell me more about the, the growth and development. Like, what is <clears throat> the code of a GD? Okay. So, the, basic, the basics of the mob, man, it's just like, it's things that you would carry throughout your everyday life, like respect, you know what I'm saying, sportsmanship. Like, we don't litter. That's one of the things we don't do. Oh, dude, that's one of my biggest pet peeves and something I see, like, a <laughs> lot of places I go, people, I'll be driving around in Milwaukee and someone will just chuck, like, a McDonald's bag out of the window. And I want to pull over and yell at them, but I'm afraid I'm going to get popped, so nah. I just don't say anything. <laughs> nah, never that. We regulating the littering out here, man. You can't litter in front of us, you dig what I'm saying? Why is that so common in the hoods to litter? Uh... Man, to keep it how it is, you know mm. what I'm saying? To keep it trenches and make it make it not a, a place for outsiders to want to come for real. Why though? Man, I don't know. That's a that's a hood mentality. You mm. feel me? Everybody don't have that. That's like I said. Some neighborhoods you go to, 
if they see you littering in their hood and you're not from there, they're going to get on your head. And I think they should because when I look around Milwaukee, I think, like, one thing that would just change the feeling of the city is just picking up all the trash. Because if people, if people can go live in a clean environment when the kids are walking in the bus stop, they're not walking past bottles and garbage. Like, I feel like that starts to shift the mentality to, okay, things are possible here. Mm-hmm. I think when, when a kid has to walk past it every single day, it starts to wear on their mind of like what's normal, what's acceptable, and a standard that sh- is too low that they shouldn't have. Yeah, that's absolutely correct, for real. <clears throat> so so if any, if we see anyone littering today, we're going to have to step on them a little Might bit. step on their toes, man. Okay, <laughs> so I'll tell you uh, my initiation process as a wrestler in high school. So yeah. when, when I was a freshman in high school, I made varsity just by the skin of my teeth. And after I wrestled my first varsity match, on the bus ride home, you have the initiation. And what it was, it's called a sandstorm. So you could pick, like, Doritos, Oreos, anything that was, like, crunchy and hard. You'd have to crush it up, and then I had to hold my eyes open, and someone blew those crumbs into my eyes. Mm-hmm. Once I survived that, I was in the group. I was part of the team. And uh, although it wasn't fun having crumbs in my eyes, it was kind of cool being part of, like, initiated into the brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the importance of initiation and because it's something missing in society. Like we have no becoming a man back in the, the with the Indians, the Native Americans, go on your vision quest, go outside fast for three or four days, catch a wolf, whatever it was. And then you became a man like there's a an entry point. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the importance of initiation for manhood. Well, uh, <clears throat> so for manhood, manhood, and then you can go more into the specifics of. OK, so for uh the importance of that, like I said, these qualities of you being a man, you're going to get taught that or you're going to bring that to the table when it comes to the organization. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because eventually it's going to get implemented somewhere at period. That's mm-hmm. just how it's going to be because that's what the organization is built upon, being mm-hmm. a man and being able to provide for your family and your friends. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just like, a, man, just having a lot of integrity and dignity. You can't be this organization. It's not easy to be this organization, first of all. So let's just get that understood. You know what I'm saying? For people worldwide, this is not something you could just jump into. And if you would ask me if you would not, uh, would you do this, uh, would you do what I'm doing right now? If you ain't got the intentions and you not made, like like I said, if I was to do something wrong outside of my jurisdiction, my guys get on my head from the, the same people you see in here right now. You dig what I'm saying? So you just got to be able to uh, be accountable for everything you do and mm. accept that you did. It seems like one of the secrets in life and the, every successful person I know has this, it's a, it's a level of discipline in their life. Right. And it seemed like to me, one of the great benefits that could come from being part of an organization like this is the discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, we were in Chicago. We we're on the South side. We were with some alleged Latin Kings yeah. and there they said to get in, I can't even say the first part of what they have to do, but it's violent. We'll we'll keep it at that. The second part is your own crew beats the shit out of you for three minutes and you're not allowed to defend yourself. And to me, I get overcoming hardship to be part of the brotherhood, but that seemed a little fucked up to me. Excessive. You could kill someone. You, yeah. If two people are beating you up without defending yourself for even a minute, you could easily kill somebody. Yeah, I don't agree with the not being able to defend yourself at all. That's just not it. You dig what I'm saying? So what to you is important in the initiation stage, like, what are you trying to prove? Like, what does the candidate have to prove? For, or what, what do you want them to show? Uh, let's just say this. For uh, Let's use this as an example. If I was to make it easy for you to become this organization just by telling you, oh, yeah, you can claim this, then you wouldn't take it as air serious. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? You would not You would be willing to trade on this absolutely quick. You dig what I'm saying? I've seen it before a couple times. You know what I'm saying? The easier you make it for somebody somebody to be able to claim what you claim, uh, the easier it is for them to infiltrate what you got going on with, like, some negativity. You dig what I'm saying? So people, you, the initiation part, that's just to see how passionate you is about it. Because you can renege on what you're saying at any point in time and decide not to show up. But yeah. I, I guarantee you, if you take this ass whooping real quick, you're going you gonna to be like, ah, nah. It shows you have some level of heart and dedication. Facts, most definitely. Okay, and I, I totally agree with that. Uh, in my yeah. world, it, when I went to college and wrestled, it was the preseason workouts were fucking insane. Like, one of the workouts we had to do was lunge for a mile and a half with a plate over your head. Mm-hmm. And just do things that would just beat the shit out of your body. And, you know, if you fucked up, like, one of the punishments was, like, if you did something wrong, you missed a practice, showed up late, you go onto the track, and you have to push a, pe- a tennis ball with your nose so you like be bear crawling and pushing the tennis ball with your nose 
around the track. Yeah. And depending on how, how bad you messed up, you had to do it one, two, three times. Yeah, it is different. But because there was a high barrier to entry, that's how you make an elite team. If anyone can join and it's easy to do, it, it, by nature, it can't be elite. Mm-hmm. Facts. Okay. So tell me about the scene in Kansas City. Is this a, a treacherous city? Is it a good city to raise a child? Should I move from Milwaukee and come here? Tell me about the lay of the land right here. Man, I'm not going to even lie to you. This city is very treacherous. But the politics is small. Like, it, it stay within the city. You dig what I'm saying? So it's it's nicest places everywhere. But when you're talking about Kansas City and you're talking about, like, the city, city, the inner city, yeah, it get crazy out there. You know what I'm saying? The politics is a little bit different. It's not like how it is in, uh, in, in, in areas that have predominantly gangs or organizations <clears throat> that's from a different state or something like that. Kansas City got their own politics, got their own – uh, local gangs You know what I'm saying That's why I said They really don't accept Anything outside Of Kansas City Okay Cause one thing That was absolutely Baffling and confusing To me Is we were in Iowa The other day mm-hmm. We were with one Group of Crips And then we found out We were with another b- Group of Crips And they were in the, We were in the same Place at the same time And they were cool With each other mm-hmm. But they said That they weren't Cool at one point And I'm thinking You both are on The same team How was there ever Any beef That just seems chaotic If you're If there's uh, beef within your own team, how can you possibly survive as a healthy structure? Uh, <clears throat> and see, that's why I say the gangs is a little more different from the organizations because with the organizations, we can't do that. You know what I'm saying? That GD on GD stuff, we can't really do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially if you actually involved how you say you is. Now, with Crip and Blood, it's a little bit different because they break down in sets. So a, a person can be rolling 60s and be Grape Street. These are two different sets of Crip. So they necessarily don't have to get along like that. Hmm. They only getting along because they pick Crip first. Wasn't the creation of gangs built around fighting police brutality and unifying an area? Was that is that the or, correct origin story? Yeah, 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 most definitely. And, uh, you know, the gangs came from Black Panthers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that that's where a lot of that... It kind of got chaotic after that, you know what I'm saying, because they locked up all the leaders, you know what I'm saying, to the communities and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely like that. <clears throat> Isn't there also some, I don't know if this is fact or conspiracy theory, but something to be said that the FBI infiltrated the Panthers and kind of tried to break them down from within because they felt like they were getting too powerful? Oh, no, that's definitely true. And that's why I say you don't make it easy for everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when you make it easy, that happens. You know what I'm saying? And it it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing something bad to yeah. be infiltrated. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can be infiltrated. It's just depending on what the person that's infiltrating your situation, intentions are. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, so I guess an example that comes to mind, like one of my favorite Americans to read about is Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. And to me, he was creating something really, really important with the nation of Islam, especially like people want to remember him as kind of a racist or a segregationist that he didn't want to mix. But they always forget the end of the story. When he went on his pilgrimage, he went to Mecca. He saw brothers, white brothers from Bosnia yep. and Serbia, and he saw people from all around the world uh, bonding under religion. And I think that's when he really started to be a uniter and a change agent. And then all of a sudden... Yep. He's gone. No, nah, that's correct, bro. Um, but I really liked the, the discipline of the nation of Islam was impressive to me. The way the men took care of their families, the way they wore suits. And they were like, you, they just were a professional group. And there was no dirt. I mean, I, I guess everyone has dirt. Yeah, I, we're all human. So everyone has dirt. But as far as a group of men can go, they did things clean. And it was almost, I feel like they made it hard to hate them because of the stuff they were doing. Like they were doing good things for the community. Yeah, most definitely. You know, uh, <clears throat> people that hated them, man, really had to hate them on a personal level. You dig what I'm saying? Because if you're going off of what they do for the community, it it don't produce hate. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So when people hear the word gang or they might hear the word like for motorcycle club, same thing. Um, I think it usually has a really negative connotation. Is that something that groups are trying to rebrand and like push the brotherhood? And, and <clears throat> Nah, not really because... Uh, that's why I said, that's why when, I, when I'm talking to you, I tell you like gangs and organizations because this has always been established since the beginning of these organizations and gangs. Mm. Gangs, you know what I'm saying? You got a hierarchy like little homie, big homie, mm. OYG, big, like BG type stuff like that, right? We don't, our structure is nothing like that. You dig what I'm saying? It's a chain of command. You okay. So that, Almost like corporate America. I've definitely heard. exactly like corporate America. You okay. Know what I'm so it's, it's, it's always a structure in place. With gangs, it's not really a structure. Say, for instance, 
if I'm a gang member and I litter, I litter, my homeboys are gonna look at me. And they not they gonna ignore it. And, and I can I, verify I've seen that happen too many times. Yeah, now if I get around these guys being who I am, they gonna look at me like, hey folk, pick that up. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let me talk about organization then. What are some like <clears throat> is there any sort of code of conduct co- conduct? Like, hey, if you do this, you're out, or if you do this, you're getting reprimanded, or like Yeah, bro, it's a uh like I said, it sounds exactly how I'm saying. It's a it's a chain of command, just like the military, just like Masons, just like everything else. And the chain of command has to be fully functional. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And a lot of these areas where it's predominantly GDs that's being uh, showed on the internet, they not really the GDs that's actually in tune. You dig what I'm saying? So a lot of the coverage getting done by GDs is not GDs that you see on that that are uh, actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. You're seeing gang member GDs. You dig what I'm saying? You're seeing gangster disciples. You're not seeing the growth and development half of GD. Yeah, so I think... Maybe you're experiencing the same thing that the Catholic Church and the police are experiencing, where it yeah. takes a small percentage of fuck ups yeah. to paint the entire organization as a bad organization. Yeah, yeah most definitely. That's accurate for sure. Okay. Uh, let me see. So you said growth and development. What are some areas that you make you excited? Like, what are things you want to push to young men as far as here are areas that we want to show growth and development or, or, or to step up and level up in? Uh man, to beginning with man, we are uh, educational, economical, political, and social development organization. You dig what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we implement each one of these categories of things in our everyday life. Like it's mandatory for us to do this. You dig what I'm saying? Like with our guys, bro, we gotta we teach them uh, about you gotta know your bill of rights first of all. You dig what I'm saying? You gotta be familiar with your laws. You gotta be familiar with uh, a lot of political stuff because, like I said, this is not something they trying to create a game. This is an organization, and we're very political. You and know? I think we want to highlight the First Amendment right to assembly yes. is a very American thing. Yes. And anybody in the world can, or well, in America, can gather, have a group, and, and function that way. So mm-hmm. I think that's a beautiful thing. Uh, and when you say Bill of Rights, you're talking about the American Bill of Rights or the GD Bill of Rights? Oh, no, American Bill of Rights. Man. Yeah. You got to know these things. Like, uh, to be GD, it's required to know your constitutional rights. Yeah. So... Are, is uh, another really important amendment, the Second Amendment, uh, right to b- to bear arms. Is that something that you guys are on? Is hey, g- let's get your concealed carry, let's get your license, let's do this properly so you can operate in a way where you don't have to be worried about getting caught up. It's already done. Yeah, it's already done. That's how we move right now. Like me, I'm uh, this is an open carry state, my boy. As yeah. long as you don't got no felonies going on in here, you know what I'm saying. You can yeah. carry a gun legally, and we advise all my guys to carry a gun legally. And the guys that can't, they don't got to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we got security around. Our brother's going to hold it down. They ain't even got to look no type of way. You did. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of fellas that I meet in the trenches aren't hip to all they have to do is pay an $80 license and they're good to go. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? Uh, You talking about with the gun rights and stuff? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Man, I don't know. Each, each state's gun rights be like strict. You know what I'm saying? Some of them don't be as strict. And a lot of people just be uh, a bliss to the whole gun rights thing, period. Like, a lot of people, like, even down here, like, I just told you, it's an open carry state down here, but it'll still be people around here carrying it illegally, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't, I don't know. People don't desire to move that type of way, the the, the right way. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess you get an adrenaline out of moving like, like that. You did? On a much smaller scale, I guess I can feel that because... Like when I was in middle school and high school, like I got so much like joy and satisfaction out of like sneaking out, Mm -hmm. ding dong ditching, like lighting fireworks off, sprint, like, oh shit, the cops are coming. Like you got to run through the bushes and shit. That to me, like, I guess there is an element when you first get into something that just the thrill of doing it Mm -hmm. makes you want to keep doing it. But I think all it takes is getting in trouble once and getting in trouble with a gun can carry a heavy penalty. And I think a lot of men could avoid that if they just... Man, there's so many things in the school system I wish were taught. Like, for instance, financial literacy. Yep. How to, hey, anybody in this world can buy a home or get into real estate if they know what they're doing yep. and use uh, leverage debt. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody can legally yep. carry a gun as long as they haven't done a felony yet. Anybody can carry a gun in this entire country. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what did you think about the education system and what would you change if you were in charge? Uh, the education system, man. I would... Uh Man, it's a lot, man. The education, that's a big topic right there. It is a big topic. Because it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff that I feel like uh we should be taught like uh within schools and stuff like that. But 
Man, that's a that's an open shred topic right I there. guess, is there something that, like, do you guys have... How do you run meetings? Like, I know, like, if you're part of a company, an mm-hmm. organization, like, some of them, <laughs> hey, do you do Zoom? Like, do you guys do Zoom calls together? Do you guys do group phone calls, email blasts? Like, how do people learn and communicate when they might not live in the same city? Uh, They do it with the fraction of the guys around them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because with, with this thing of ours, bro, it's, it, we are everywhere. Every state that you can think of, every state you've been to in the United States, we're there. We might be a large por- portion of us there, or it might be a small portion of us there, but we there operating how we operate everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mandatory that we operate the same way. So, uh, man, what was the question again? I'm tweaking. I was talking about school systems and, like, uh, oh, how, how people, like, so, like, okay, if you're part of uh, an organization, like, sometimes they want to teach if you want to get teachings across, like, is it is it up to, like, each area comes up with their own philosophy? Or is there, like, a unified thing? Like, today, guys, we're going over open carry and how to buy a house. And next week, we're covering yeah. discipline. You know what I mean? Like, how does that get? Uh, no, nah, yeah, no. Nah, that does. Uh, it's up to, the like I said, the fraction of the guys that you're around. So whether you're in Milwaukee, you get up with them guys out there in Chicago. Get up with the little amount of guys that's out there that is rocking the positive way. Because mm-hmm. it, it does exist in Chicago. It's just it's the majority is not rocking the right way. So, yeah, that's just up to whoever teaching you. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the guys you surround yourself with, they it's up to them to have you up to par when it comes to the organization. So I would imagine a risk that comes with being part of any organization. I'm going to go into mob history. Yeah. Mobs got away with so much shit for so long, and then there was a professor and a lawyer that developed the RICO idea. And then all of a sudden, these godfathers, these mobsters went from pretty much untouchable. Like, they did so much shit that they never, you know, accounted for, and now you can take out an organization. Is that something that's on people's minds as they're creating organizations? Is like, this is how we have to move to move smart. Oh, most definitely. Because throughout history, man, it's it's been a lot of crazy things happen within the organizations because you know 48 laws of power it show you how to destroy an organization from within yeah you dig what i'm saying that's a powerful thing because you got people out here really trying to do that <laughs> you dig so mm-hmm. it's just uh man it just depends it just depends on the situation and where you at for real is larry hoover a guy we can talk about larry hoover's no longer a part of the organization uh can we talk about him just as far as the origin story we don't have to talk about current affiliations or what he said but like what got him to to decide to create something and to build an organization? Uh, man, he was on, like I said, this this educational, economical, political, and social development run. He was really on that. You know what I'm saying? He was one of the guys telling the guys to get out there and vote. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and, and, and present themselves the way they need to present themselves to get involved and rub elbows with politicians and stuff like that. You did? Yeah. So he was really preaching that when he was out here heavily. You dig what I'm saying? It's just... When all the little indictments and all that came, you know what I'm saying, that kind of slowed things down because the people that was pu- pushing the political progress, they end up getting locked up, you know what I'm saying? So now you have people that's 14, 15, 16 out here that's, that's repping GD with no guidance. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the youngsters of America right now because one rule I had to make what pretty – Early on into doing these documentaries is don't talk to the miners because they're so crazy. They're so wild. Like, they scare the shit out of me, dude. Like, I live in Milwaukee, and I'm thinking, like, I have a kid on the way. Like, how long do I stay in Milwaukee? Because these little guys are doing the most. Um, And it seems like it's a lack of guidance, Mm -hmm. a lack of discipline. Do you see that trend as well, that the, the youngsters are kind of, like, going way out there and kind of being outlaws yeah um it doesn't happen with us because like i said that structure it always keeps it in place to where everything is fully functional even amongst the youngest like the youngsters that you're gonna see today i got brothers that's 15 16 years old but you would think they 21 years old because how they carry themselves how well they carry themselves man so it just depends like who the youngsters is who they surrounding themselves with you know what i'm saying because a lot of people allow their youngsters to move like that we don't do that over here so how do you help the youngsters? Like, part of me is wondering, are some of these kids too far gone? You got to focus on, like, the elementary school kids and, and build them up? Or, like, because it's hard to see, like, when I when I talk to some of the Kia boys, and they're like, yeah, I've stolen hundreds of cars, and I don't give it, like, I don't care. I don't care if someone lost their job because of it. I don't care if someone lost their home be- because of it. Like, 
they drive in a way where their own friends are dying in the car or they'll hit a school bus with the car. Like it's just a level of recklessness and lack of care about others that I just, I can't wrap my head around. And I almost wonder like, is this kid not, is he savable? But like, how do you reach a kid that's already that far gone? Uh, just like we reaching the people on the internet from the gangster disciples and black disciples, you know, that, that topic right there, that's an influential thing to use. And if you, part of this organization and you got a right mindset and integrity dignity as long as you getting up on these little guys bro because you already influence them by what you repping hmm. you know what i'm saying so you use that influence and then you be somebody with integrity and dignity and you just rub that off on them they already attracted to the fact that it's an organization out here and we 50 plus deep you know what i'm saying they love that that's what got young guys love that's why they joining gangs and stuff like that because they want to be a part of something so lead with your actions let them watch and observe and then want to emulate that. yep most definitely okay so i've been trying to get into different white organizations i've been trying to reach out to motorcycle <laughs> clubs i've been trying to reach out to the kkk i've been mm-hmm. trying to find neo-nazis are there any groups that i might be not thinking about that um what were the groups out in chicago that the kings were going to connect us with it was like the 12th street there was like one tiny squad of sketchy whites, and I was trying to find them. It's some, uh, it's some guys in Chicago. They call themselves uh, Simon City Royals. Simon City Royals. They all white, bro. You need to do, yeah, go get up with them for sure. Do you know where the most like white gang heavy area is? Am I just missing on the map when I'm looking around? Like, uh, or is it more so the motorcycle guys? You think? Nah, bro. Like I said, you go to Mississippi. My uh, dad's side of my family, whole entire family from Mississippi. You go to Mississippi. Uh, like, okay, Simon City Royals and GD, we're under the same, we wanted the same, uh, they wanted our folks, that's how I say that. You dig what I'm saying? They wanted the branches of the guys, you dig? Okay. And uh, they're all white. So being that it was down south, how they had it, it's crazy. Like, down south, you still still kind of racist out there a little bit. Yeah. So we can't, we, we, uh, we function in harmony, but it's like a lot of, say, for instance, the white people that wanted to be GD, like, down south, in Mississippi, a lot of the times they wouldn't allow them to be that, so they would go to Simon City Royals because they still the folks, but they just all white. You dig mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So Mississippi a little bit weird to where, not weird, but like it still has that that history in it to where the deep south kind of yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. really change it. It's stuck how it is for real. Okay, uh, what was the other group I was? Th- oh, is there really a squad called the Gaylords? Yeah, the Vice Lords. No, no, actually called the Gay Lords. I'm not like talking shit about no, the Vice no, Lords. I'm, no, I'm saying. They were initially called the Gay Lords? No, there's a branch of Vice Lords called Gay Lords. Who made that one up? I don't know about none of that. That's <laughs> out of pocket, I feel like. <laughs> no, I think it was named after somebody, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and plus. His last had... name was Gay. That's what I heard. You know what I'm saying? But that definitely is a thing. Okay, okay. Because I was like, I was imagining like a bunch of like strong gay dudes walking around beating the shit out of people. And I'm like, that would be scary as shit, dude. No. I would never mess with those guys, dude. Imagine like you do a drive by and they just like paint your house the rainbow and fucking spray it, dude. That would be insane. Yeah, nah, it's a real thing, though. It's most definitely real. So tell me about dreams, visions, goals. Like, what, when everything's said and done, because the good thing and the sad thing about life. Is we're all gonna be a pile of dust one day. Facts. We're gonna people are gonna forget about us. The next generation comes on and we'll we'll fade into oblivion. But any anyway, but it is important that we do make a difference while we're here. What Facts. are the things that you are thinking about and want to change or produce or create? Man, we trying to create a generational wealth around here, bro. That's like one one of the biggest things that's going around with me and my guys. Like we got an LLC, struggle breeds greatness. Yeah, you know what I'm saying we pushing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we got a non-profit set up, too. So we be giving out to the homeless, giving back. Yeah, tell me more about that. Yeah, man. We, uh, well, for, like I said, man, this organization of ours is beautiful. So uh, it's mandatory that we give back to the homeless every month. You dig what I'm saying? And then, like, how the organization uh, does it, like, we got a non-profit. And then we got this thing to where, like, it's, it's like, you pay a membership fee to be this. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? Every month. Mm. 
know what I'm saying? Those funds is used to get back to the community and our people. You know what I'm saying? To take care of our guys. Say if you GD one, right? And you you down behind on your house bill, your light bills and stuff mm. like that. You you out of work. A community fund to help people out. Yeah, most definitely. But you have to be able to you gotta be paying that every month to even get that type of help because a lot of people will misuse that if you allow them to. So it's only for the people that's involved on paying their membership fees every month. You can go in, say for instance, you behind on your light bill, you a week off work, all right, we got a box. You go go to the uh my treasure, you know what I'm saying? And he gon he gonna set it up for you to have that money and get taken care of like that. It's you gotta repay it though, because it's for everybody. How is the homeless situation in Kansas City? The homeless situation, mm -hmm. man, it's pretty bad, man. Cause I say it's bad everywhere, but it's bad in Kansas City, bro. It's just that's why we out there so much. It's easy to find them, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, not too long ago, uh, a homeless community had got set on fire. You know what I'm saying? In Kansas City by uh, it was like a community center by there. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of land out there with a lot of people that was homeless. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, people died out there. So it is like. It's it's big out here. I say that much. It's huge out here, bro. You go area, you go downtown, go a lot of places downtown, go by Swope and stuff like that. You'll see a lot of homeless people set up everywhere, bro. So you were talking about um, putting money into the community, putting money uh, when someone needs help, that you give them a leg up. Mm -hmm. uh, a recent story I heard that just made me really mad to hear was, so because BLM had a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. They had millions and millions of dollars donated to them mm -hmm. and then the story i've heard is that the the founders of it kind of ran off they got mansions for themselves yep. their parents and i don't know if they really put a dime into the communities that they were claiming to support what is your take on that uh that's bogus you know what i'm saying because uh one thing about it like say for instance if 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 with gd we crumbled today mm -hmm. all that money we've collected Man, we're going to dish it back out to our guys. Mm. And, and one person's not going to keep that. It's going back in everybody's pockets. You dig what I'm saying? You don't just get to keep it when it's all said and done and it's over with. You want to bail out. It don't work like that. Because if I was to do that, these specific guys you see here with me right now would be coming to see about me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So it's just, yeah, that's bogus. And that's also what comes back to integrity is yeah. that, hey, you know, we might have a pot of tens of thousands of dollars because you have enough people doing whatever, 50 a month, 80 a month, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that that pot grows. Mm -hmm. And like, but the thing is, that's how gathering together can be very powerful. It's almost like a union, you know, fighting for higher wages within a company. When people mm -hmm. band together, some good things can really happen. And I'm sure like the, the Kings do something like that too, where if someone dies, the funeral is paid for yeah, in a second. Yeah. You know, and so I think there's a lot of, I think there, everything in this world is a yin and yang symbol because Everywhere you look, things are good and bad, and there's. But I think like, I always try and focus. What are the positives happening that we can highlight? And I think uh, being able to have a community rally around each other mm -hmm. and support each other, who wouldn't want that for somebody? Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful like that, bro, because it's like that. Like me and my guys, we just traveled to. Uh, we went to Memphis. We went to Arkansas. Uh, I just had some of the guys go out to Mississippi. But every time we touch down in these specific areas, we with the guys. Like, and, bro, that's always a beautiful thing, like, to be able to have access to this. Like, it's just to know that it's in, it's 50 other states where every Sunday or every other Sunday when we when we getting up and we barbecuing and we feeding the homeless, it's somebody in this organization doing the same thing, like a group of people doing the same thing, bro. Like, mm. That's dope to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love that. Uh, where that comes in my life is uh, with cauliflower ear from wrestlers and yeah. jujitsu guys. Like mm -hmm. you walk into any room and a guy has cauliflower ear, it's all like, okay, where, where'd you wrestle? What yeah. way did you go? <laughs> How, you yeah. know? And then instantly it's like, if shit goes down in this place, we're going to be standing back to back, double legging the shit yep. out of people. Yep. Thanks. And that's a beautiful thing, <laughs> you know? Yep. So who would you say is a Kansas <clears throat> city icon? Who is somebody that you're like, this guy is the blueprint or this guy has a lot of uh, admirable qualities to look up to? Uh man, uh I'm a, some legends in Kansas City, like artisans wise. Mm -hmm. Okay, I say Tech Nine. Tech Nine, baby. My, I say Tech Nine, Rich the Factor. You got a. Let's first pause on Tech Nine because I've only been to four, probably four rap shows in my whole life where I was uh, in the crowd going crazy, and three of them were Tech Nine concerts. Mm -hmm. That man is the ultimate entrepreneur. Like he got totally blackballed by the industry. Yep. One of the most talented guys of his era. And he created this huge underground independent structure mm -hmm. that he's a consistent Forbes, uh, Forbes list rapper. Yep. Uh, 
what has that been like having a guy in your own city like show everyone how it can be done? Man, people, uh, it's inspirational for real, bro. Just seeing that that's another thing why uh I'm I'm getting my team together, how I'm getting it together. Cause like Tech Nine, bro, if, if people don't know, man, he got one of the biggest merch uh companies in the world, bro. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? As an independent musician. You know what I'm saying? An uh, independent record label. So, uh, Strange Music has done a lot of fantastic business moves. And what I love about them, and I feel a little bit about our brand in a way too, is like, I was, I feel like I never was accepted by like the mainstream. Like, we were always the underdog. YouTube mm-hmm. was almost, I, I was a video away from getting kicked off permanently yeah. on YouTube. And I thought, like, how the hell am I about to get kicked off? And all we're really doing is talking to real life people and getting their story and showing you the raw shit of what's going on in this world. Like, how is that something that I'm going to get kicked off for? Mm-hmm. And so that's like that underdog mentality of like, okay, we have to build up all the streams because if one stream gets shut off, I, I got to keep this thing going. Yep. This is what pays the bills, the mortgage, everything. Mm-hmm. So like ha- that independent spirit to me is something that I really admire about Tech 9 and Strange Music. Is there anything like more like behind the scenes you've got to see or like, Things that impressed you about meeting some of those guys? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, shit. Man, we worked with them two weekends in a row, man. Like, that was dope, you know what I'm saying? To be there and be able to politic. And uh, them to even be able to, like, uh, I had a summer jam show. You know what I'm saying? My manager, I'm like a, I'm trying to, I'm kind of introverted a little bit, you dig? Like, in real life. Like, Being a rapper is an interesting profession. Yeah, for you. I know, right? You know what I'm saying? And uh, one day we was at, uh, I had got booked for this summer jam show by my boy FSP Bastille. Shout out Bastille. And, uh, man, it was so many dope artists on that joint. And I was walking up to the stage, and I'm with both of my managers, and we just walking. And, uh, my manager's like, well, I got tapped on my shoulder. And I look, and it's Tech Nine. He's like, man, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? He's like, do your thing. Went up there, killed it, came back down. He's like, bro, you know what you're doing already. You know what I'm saying? Keep grinding. And from somebody from that type of level to tell me that already, boy, I took that and ran with it. I'm that's, like, man, Tech Nine told me I know what I'm doing. That means I'm a good judgment at things. You know what I'm saying? That's wind in your sails, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, one thing that, I th- that I'm taking out of that story that I think is really important for us as men is to give encouragement to each other. Yeah. Because I think encouragement is some of the strongest push that anybody can ever get is like you're doing the right thing you got this keep going it's not gonna be an easy journey it's Mm -hmm. not gonna be easy road but if you keep going you're gonna be just fine Mm -hmm. because i think probably the biggest battle in any part of life is not quitting too early Mm -hmm. and i I think another thing i've been able to see in this youtube world in the rap world is like i don't think you want to blow up overnight i don't think that's good for you facts i'm thinking of designer the guy that made the panda song yeah he blew up extremely quickly and then he came back down to earth. Yep. I would rather be the guy that takes like seven seven years to cook up, and then I got seven years. It's almost like as long as you it takes for you to blow up is as long as you you stay on the scene. Yeah, and that's facts, and that's that's what I've been thinking. And that's what I've been noticing too, because uh, that's one thing I was telling my guys. I'm like, I ain't in a rush to blow up. I got to build my portfolio up a little bit more. You feel me? Like it's already happening. I got hundreds of songs released, so I'm just like. Man, I look at J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Yo Gotti, these people that's in the industry for the longevity, man, they already had albums prior to blowing up. Yeah, <laughs> I remember seeing a tweet of Kendrick Lamar's. It was like, yo, shout out everybody for giving me 500 followers on Twitter or something yep, like that. I've seen that. And then you see where he is now. And I think um, that's everybody. Everyone starts from zero followers and and. Their trajectory, like if you're honest enough with your own skills, mm-hmm. if you know where to improve, if you stay consistent. Staying consistent is one of the biggest things yep. as well. My friend Certified Trapper is, is uh, coming out of Milwaukee. And what I love about him, it's entirely do it yourself. Like he controls all aspects. He's the producer. Mm-hmm. He's the beat maker. Mm-hmm. He makes his own music videos. There is no one that's standing in the way between him and his success. Mm-hmm. And he's a dog. Like you, you, the the work he puts out. There's no like it, it's not surprising to see. Why he is in the position that he is yeah, right now? I've been now. seeing him on my YouTube feed, man, blowing up. Yeah. He's funky as hell, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Milwaukee's got that real like funky gangster flavor. Yeah, I fuck with it though. They like, definitely. they'll like, like uh, <laughs> take care of business when they need to, but then they'll also do like crazy dance moves mm-hmm. on you. You know? Yep, yep, most definitely. I had a uh, my buddy uh, from Milwaukee, man. Uh, he died not too long ago, man. Uh, Man, I forgot my, my boy name, man. He's one of the guys though from Milwaukee, man. R.P. My boy. I'm his name gonna come to me in a minute though, most definitely. But he was a comedian though. You know what I'm saying? He uh, 
Man, I forgot bro's name, man. Bankhead? Bankhead. R.P. my Shout boy Bankhead, Bankhead, man. Rest in peace, my yeah. G. Bankhead, man. That was he one was of a my good brothers. guy. Yeah, bro. That's one of my guys, bro. It's, uh, and that was one of them relationships from the... From like I was telling you, like you are, when you GD man, you build relationships based on you being GD. Like so, I just knew folks based off of me being GD and a, and, and a uh, influential brother. You know what I'm saying? He was really connecting with the right people, doing his shit. You feel me? He had a real good heart to him yeah, too. Yeah, hell yeah. But I funny. think he just took a lot of uh, joy in making people laugh with mm-hmm. his skits. Yep. And uh, yeah, I got to meet him once. I had a great experience with him. Yep. And uh, it's sad to see. I mean, another thing that is crazy is that. So I think he had cancer. Yeah, he, he did. Passed have, he away. had cancer. Yep. And someone's calling me like fifteen times in a row, dude. What the? F- oh, my wife. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Siri, I'm doing a, a podcast. Is everything all right? I love you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> okay. Just gotta make sure if the yeah. wife's calling that many. I don't know if she called too many times or if that was just me. Nah, that's good, fam. Okay, things are good. Okay. Um. I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, bankhead. 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 Da, okay. Uh, and I just saw this. A, a woman from the jujitsu gym I, I'm in just passed away from cancer. I didn't mm-hmm. even know she was sick. I think, like, realizing how sacred life is, how short it can be, and that this is just one ridiculous journey. Like, it re- like I, I, I felt this way this morning. was just like, what the hell is my life right now? Like, I love it. I'm excited about it. But, yeah. like... And it could be over in a flash. It really could. And mm-hmm. so I guess one thing that strikes me that worries me about how I'm seeing cities progress, or not maybe the, the wrong word is, is, what's the opposite of progress? Degress? Yeah. Regress? Yeah. I'm seeing like a lack of sacredness around life. Like yeah. people are taking life or over the craziest things. There's a homicide detective in, in the jujitsu class. He said, a guy got shot in Milwaukee for losing a push-up contest. A guy got shot in Milwaukee for... Uh, he took someone's hot pocket out of the microwave too fast. And of yep. course, there's probably more to the story than just that. Mm-hmm. But it's this, like, it feels like there's just, like, overall life isn't as sacred to people anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you see that? And, and why do you think that is? Because, man, it's an ego competition, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, people want to be so gangster nowadays, and that's just everybody, bro. Even the people that's not from that type of environment, they got a point to prove, you know what I'm saying? And just people like, bro, like I got a homeboy in prison, bro, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he out now. He was just telling me about this the other day. He was just rapping in the car, and he was telling me, like, how prison, bro, to have you getting mani in there because he ended up stabbing somebody over a hot pocket. A hot pocket? That doesn't seem worth it, dude. No, nah, it's not worth it. And like, how many extra years does he get for that? Man, he thought he killed the dude. So when he was telling me, he was like, yeah, man, the officers kept telling me I killed him. And, like, when he when the officers told him that, he was losing it. He's like, man, I ain't going to never see my mama, my my brother no more, my daddy, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just let him trick me off the street for a hot pocket. Why wasn't he thinking about that as he was creating the shank in his cell, dude? Because he told me, he said when he tried to stab him the first time, he thought it bent. But it didn't bend. It was just going in him. You know what I'm saying? So he thought he didn't stab the dude. But then, like, when they started getting arrested after the stabbing, you know how they held him, both of y'all up. He said he was just sitting down, and then it's just like a red. It just started showing. Red just started showing on his shirt everywhere he stabbed him at. You know what I'm saying? So now that almost hurt his pride, though. You know what I'm saying? That just that He came to realization. Like, he was that close to killing him. You know what I'm saying? You just almost lost your whole life. Your life can be gone like that, bro. And not even by you, but dying by you just throwing it away. You feel me? I guess I don't know why. Like I, I've read a lot about how prison has been over time. Like what it was like in the 1700s. What it was like, how horrible. Like there was a time when uh, you could be put in solitary confinement without speaking. Like you weren't even allowed to speak. I remember reading about this French prisoner who made him uh, escape, and then he got caught again. Mm-hmm. And because he had escaped and got caught, he went to like the worst prison that they could send him to. And for the last four years of his confinement. He wasn't allowed to even speak. At, like, you would get the sh- fucking shit kicked out of you by the guards if you even spoke. Mm-hmm. And then they ruled shortly after that 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 long of solitary confinement was inhumane, and then they started making different rules. But the threat of being in a cage for an extreme amount of time, mm-hmm. how is that not more of a deterrent? than it? Like, I feel like that should be like, oh, if I, like, yeah, this guy pissed me off. My hot pocket's messed up, and I'm pissed, but... 10 years versus a hot pocket. Like, how is that not like... Because when you in there, you a bliss to the 
the time you get, no matter what time, even if it's a year, bro, you being in there for so long, operating a certain way, or have you acting like an animal, bro, whether it's a year, five months, any of that, it's just, you let that consume you too much. Like, like when you go in prison, you can't go in there all happy and you know what I'm saying? You can't go in there like that. I'm I'm skipping down yeah, there. No, you the gotta cells. you gotta you gotta get in your masculinity for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta become an apex predator, bro. Yeah. So that people be under there and they feed into that so much, but some people do it too soon. You know what I'm saying? Some people do it way too soon. Like a, a year, two years, that's doing it too soon. And now if you're talking like 15, 20 years, I can see why you forgot you got something to lose. Hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Some people are thinking they in there for life and they ain't got nothing to do. If there's any group that I've heard that gets an immense amount of respect in the prison system, mm-hmm. it's the neo Nazis. Oh yeah. Apparently, I, I don't know if this is the exact statistics. The woods. The woods. Yeah, facts. They they represent like two percent of the prison population, but like half of the takeouts. I don't want to get the business, censored on yeah, on facts. YouTube, <laughs> but they represent like half of that. Yeah, facts. Is that a known thing for like? I like, get these yeah. guys are insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely, it's not even so much of them being insane. It's you know a lot of people partner with them. And do business with them. So on that aspect of things, yeah, they there mm. people utilize each other when you're in prison, and especially like the blacks and Mexicans. Like they'll do business with the woods. You feel me? The woods be having all type of stuff that you be need. You know what I'm saying? They 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 neutral people when you're in prison. Just because they pro white don't mean they anti black. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. So that's just how that is. Mm. So do you view them as a racist organization? No. Okay, because I feel like in America right now, I did now Nazis. And when you put that N word in front of there, yeah, I believe the Nazis are <laughs> uh, racist for real. But yeah, yeah. But like woods and stuff, like regular woods, brother. Kind some, of a separate. Yeah, that's little, it's, yeah, it's a separate entity. And, and from my understanding, because I know some Aryan Brotherhood people, um, I went to work with some a lot, and uh, I had a couple buddies that was in the uh, feds, and uh, uh, Aryan Brotherhood is not so fond of uh, neo Nazis for real. I lumped them in the same category. I thought it was all kind of nope. the same. Nope. Okay. So, because I think we're in, like, right now what I notice in America is like, you can be very like, oh, I'm an Indian immigrant. Fuck yeah. You know, I'm a black guy. Hell yeah. But mm-hmm. if a guy's like, I'm white, it's all like, shh, like stop that shit. Like nah, cut, hell cut nah. it out. What I do you t- think about that? Man, I, man, I love when my brothers, my bro, I got a brother named John D. He GD. Boy, that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? He's white. He's white as hell, bro. But <laughs> I love him for that. We love him for that mm-hmm. because he's not acting like nothing else. And we, like, he's he's that still. You know what I'm saying? Just because he's white, don't be fooled. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's he's one of us for sure. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like mainstream media wants to make white people not let themselves be proud of anything, like, of, the, of related to race? Like, I feel like you can't be, like, you know what I mean? And it is yeah, a fine media, line. Nah, that is a media thing. That's definitely a media thing. I don't feel like it's an in-person thing. It's just, yeah, when, like, I seen this thing where it's just the, I don't know, people got their own opinion about what culture vulturing is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like a, that'd be a lot of uproar. Like, I seen a white girl with braids on Facebook and all the, like, the black and brown people are like, why, why she got this in her hair? Why she got weave? Why she trying to be like us? And, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. It's just, I don't know. To each his own. People think like that, though. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't like it, but me, I look at it, I don't really care. Well, I think, I guess how I look at the whole culture thing is I think what makes America wonderful is there's like a million blends. Yeah, facts. And innovation is when you grab someone's idea and you add your own little piece to it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, they had a, a wagon with wheels. Okay, I'm going to make the car. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'm going to make the Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, and that's how things... Like, I think it's a compliment. If someone is copying something you are doing, that is a compliment to you that's like, your idea is good, mm-hmm. and I think, I, and I want to imitate that. I think, because I think America would not be what it is today if we didn't borrow each other's ideas. No, that's facts. You, you know? definitely, that is not wrong at all. That's facts. And then it's like, where do we want to draw the line to, like, Greeks invented the marathon is anyone that's non-greek not allowed to run a marathon like i feel like you can get into weird waters when you go too far with that and stuff that's why you know it just be people talking that don't know what they they talking about though you know what i'm saying because if you a smart intellectual you know what i'm saying you gonna know that uh you gonna know where these things came from you gonna know where pizza came from you gonna know where uh tacos came from you gonna know i feel like instead of dividing us that should make us love each other it's like italians Hell yeah, I love pizza, yep. I love spaghetti, yep. I love my movies. Like, you guys are welcome here. Like, I feel you can, a good way to look at the world is to look at everybody and find something positive to pick out about them and celebrate and enjoy. Yeah, and that's like, that's what 720 is, bro. That's what our concept, growth and development is like. It's like, uh, 
it's like the concept of and the ideology of unity in America. Like it's implemented in within our organization because we got all these diverse cultures involved in our like we got Mexicans that's GDs, we got black people that's GDs, white people, uh what else we got? Asians, Koreans, you know what I'm saying? We got Shout brothers. out my Korean dogs. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. You dig? So it's is the diversity of that is very is, is like it's needed. I think it's incredibly needed because from a, an outsider looking in, one thing that I because I've I've I think I've we've interviewed almost every kind of culture you can find in mm-hmm. America. There is a huge lack of trust amongst a lot of black men right now. Oh yeah, most definitely. And I think it's it's biting them in the ass because you cannot build something powerful or strong with no trust. It, things will collapse very quickly. And yeah. you look at like <clears throat> Indi- Indian guys, hey. I'll fly you over to the to the America. You're going to help me run this gas station. I'm going to run this gas station. I'm going to teach you the business. And then when you're old enough, I'll give you your own. Mm-hmm. And then they grow because there's a high degree of trust in that culture. Mm-hmm. What do you make of that? Like, how could you inspire more trust amongst black men? And why does it seem to be missing? That's never going to change, bro. Because for the simple fact, like, for me to kick it with you as a friend or even accept you as a friend, you have to have the same beliefs I do. Mm-hmm. I, or I'm not going to be around you. And it's not because I don't, well, it's definitely because I don't trust you. You know mm. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, mm. I only feel comfortable around my people. Mm. If, like, say, for instance, if you're not a, if you don't belong to anything, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I got friends that are, that, that are neutral, that don't bang anything. You mm. know what I'm saying? But who I associate with myself with on a daily basis is the people that read the same thing as me. Because guess what? When I'm around him, I ain't got to worry about nothing getting stole. Some get stole, then the organization going to deal with that. We don't steal from each other. That's one thing we don't do. Now, certain people don't have so much integrity and dignity, so they it's opportunists out here. I don't want no opportunists around me. I want somebody to believe in the same ideology and the concept of the organization I do. You did? Hmm. A little later today, we yeah. are going to be cooking up a barbecue. Yes, sir. Do you know what's on the menu? I've been kind of thinking about this on the car ride up. Man, it's probably going to be uh, around what time we get the interview, like 3 like three. And you know what like what's gonna be on the grill? Oh yeah, we're gonna have man, we got some chicken, we got some beef brides, man, we mm-hmm. got some hamburgers out there. Uh what else we got out there, man? We got a little something we got a little something for y'all out there for sure. We okay. get some of this Kansas City barbecue, man. Cause big dogs gotta eat, yeah, right? Big dogs gotta eat for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have any final thoughts? Anything you'd like to leave the audience with? Uh man, be real, keep it a hundred. Uh Man, just keep it pushing, man. Shout out to my gang, man. Shout out to Six Block, man. Taliban. Love the guys, man. Ills and shills, man. Go through development. We're going to keep it pushing, man. You dig what I'm saying? But that's about it for sure. Guys, you can find uh, Young Blue's music. I mean, it's going to be in the description. Blow them up. Common Big Dog's got to eat. And folks, what a journey this life is. I think when we sit down and talk to each other, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Wood, GD, whatever kind of differentiation you can make about people, when you actually sit down one-on-one, you find that most people have similar goals, similar ambitions, and the world is actually a pretty cool and friendly place. So keep that mentality. Go give somebody a hug or send someone a, a nice text and encourage them, and we'll see you guys next episode. Peace. Yes, sir.